Is enlightenment a habit, a conscious doing, a conscious choosing? Is there a doer in all of this stuff? I'm going to discuss this because yet again there seems to be more debates going on and there needs to be some clarity around this. So I personally say, and I'm Jason at AwakenEssence.com, I say it is a conscious choosing, it's a conscious doing. Reasons that I say this. Firstly, are you conscious right now of your right foot? You are now, aren't you? So, what does that tell you? You had to place your attention there to know that your right foot still existed. Right? The same goes with the awakened present state. How do you know if you're present or not? choose to be aware of it, don't you? Your attention goes to that place where you are nothing. Where who you are is the stillness of spirit, the stillness of nothing, the stillness of the void that is everything. So you are connected with it. So if you're not consciously aware of that Are you awake? Unless I reminded you. So this is why I say it is a doing, it is a choosing, and for you to be consciously aware as that. So, um, being aware of your body. Being aware of your body while you're aware of that nothingness. This is what anchors it into, into reality. Because you can think space, you can think nothingness. And a lot of people do it, and a lot of people claim to be enlightened, and all it is is they've read a book and they're using the words in their head, and they think they're there. And this stuff's measurable. I always say this, this stuff is measurable. Is that stillness there when you're in an argument? Is that stillness there when you're on the toilet? Is that stillness there when you're in a traffic jam? When you're at the job and a co-worker is being painful and annoying you or something's not going right, is that stillness consciously there with you, just like your left foot now is, as I talk about it? So you have to consciously acclimatise to having the everything with you, don't you? It becomes a habit. So, until you can consciously hold this stuff and be aware of it, and it stabilizes and you are customized to it, then it will only happen at fleeting moments and you can't pull it in on demand. You are a person and you choose, right? You, 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 the only person that can tell you where to put your attention is you. Yes? Your mother can't tell you where to put your attention, nor can your father, nor can your, your friends, your family, your partner, whoever, your boss. Your boss can't tell you where to put your attention or he'll fire you. But anyway, only you can choose where you allow your awareness to be. Therefore it's a choosing, and that requires effort. <laughs> effort and motivation. Do you want this? Or is it just a nice idea? I want to be enlightened because it's a nice idea or it's a nice avoidance from the pain so with with this awareness of all that is God the universe that which comes before your spirit the thing that your spirit came from are you aware of your tummy breathing and what's going on in your body the aches and the pains and the nice stuff and the bad stuff and the tensions and, you know, all the rest. Anchor it in your body. It becomes tangible. And it becomes real. So, this is the practice. Where do I put my attention? Is it a practice? Yes, it is. Because if you don't learn to anchor God in here, it's a bit like giving a five-year-old a ten-ton truck to drive 
assuming they can reach the pedals and all the rest and asking them to take a load of stuff from Melbourne up to Cairns which is a couple of days drive the kid won't do it will it because it doesn't know how to so you have to learn the uh, process of holding the everything the awakening the awakened state in life and this is how it's measurable can you hold it during the simple times can you only bring the stillness and the space in when you're doing your meditation and you're sitting still with the right music and the right incense and all that sort of stuff <laughs> when you've had a nice day and no arguments can you sit still after you've had an argument or better still can you be still while in an argument this is how it's measurable and as you deepen into your practice you will be able to hold full anger and rage and all, all those other things and still hold the stillness the space that you are at the same time because those things are coming through the body you are not the body but it is where you sense everything how can this not be a practice please explain this to me I don't care what other gurus and teachers have said if what they said worked everybody on this planet would be awake wouldn't they let's get real if it was put clearly so people could do it that actually want to do it a lot more people would be awake now because there'd be a clear path how to get there and this is the clear path it's pretty defined so you practice presence in your body like Eckhart Tolle says be aware of your body be aware of your inner body the energetics the pains the the space the energy of your meridians and all that sort of stuff the warm the warm soggy feeling of having a bag of meat then the subtler layers lower mental body emotional body lower mental body higher self higher mental body which is this here so stay away from that and then the everything which is God the space that's outside past Pluto right you learn to anchor all these things in your neurology and this is what your neurology is for your mind isn't just up here your mind is through your body it's a full body there's as much neurology in your tummy and in your guts yes you have bleep for brains literally that's neurology based in your solar plexus solar plexus what is that well it's that shiny thing that's blinding my eyes but I'm doing that for the video so you can see me solar logos solar plexus it's your core it's your emotional center it's your center of your identity <laughs> not just here so be in the body so there's all of you not just this bit this is why mental practice people think they've got it and I did that for years until I had a teacher get pretty brutal with me about it and I had the guts to look video on self-honesty call Laura Grace if you're not self-honest and you're not looking or oh, am I just doing a number on myself then this is why you have a coach that gives you one-on-one -on -one feedback I have a coach I've had her for 20 years she's amazing so in the body it's a practice I'm choosing to be aware of everything I'm feeling all my body I'm seeing down the edge of the lake here feeling behind me feeling the wind all over the different parts of my body as I'm talking to you being aware of where the cap is so you can still see my eyes mostly if I can all right there's a lot I'm aware of and I'm aware of all the subtleties the nothingness laughing at life so notice the sounds in your environment choosing to be conscious to be awake what does awake mean what's this what happens when this turns into so to be awakened enlightened is you're going from I'm an unconscious person and I'm not aware of my no my nothingness my space my spirit to holy crap I'm actually not a person I'm all this stuff but I'm stuck with this guy 
or girl, depending on what you are. Awakening is bringing consciously all that into here. And the dance. It's a habit. So initially, to actually get to the enlightened place, it is a practice of integrating and acclimatizing and bringing all of that into your body, into your being. Relentless practice, not just when you're meditating. Relentless practice, it is a relentless doing. Yes, there is no effort involved. <laughs> that certainly happens when your identity, your, your personality, your ego, call it what you like. When all those separation mechanisms snap and all of a sudden, oh, and it is a big shock even if you've practiced your way to it. If you haven't practiced your way to it, it's devastating. You'll be dysfunctional. This is why we practice presence, so you acclimatize. Really. But when it snaps and it's just here all the time, you know you're nothing. Oh, there is no doing. Yeah. During the honeymoon period, which may last anything from, I don't know, a couple of weeks to five years. <laughs> but that's the time when you ground it and make it real and make it truly, deeply integrated. And if you don't keep being aware and integrating this into your body after you have the enlightenment process and the, there's a number of people out there that are going through this at the moment that aren't doing the practice which means messy because because it's always here and you're aware of that the bad habits stay the bad habit of not being aware of what you are while you're in life doesn't take root it's a bit like driving the car you can learn to drive a car properly be aware of that until it becomes unconscious then you can drive properly and hold conversations and have arguments and not crash the car enlightenment is no different you're bringing yourself to that place where you are stably here but it's also still a stable habit I'm always checking in why because it's awesome in all of life's happenings and I'm talking in life brushing teeth Making coffee, standing in the sun, driving. I'm aware of my space, my stillness, my nothingness, but I'm also aware of my humanness, my body, and that it's anchored in my body. The habit is automatic. To be consciously awake. Not consciously awake, oh yeah, I'm enlightened. Mm, that's always here. But I won't consciously choose it because, you know, I'd rather just get lost in Facebook and not be aware of my space at the same time. This is the uh, linchpin of free will. Excuse the sweat, it's hot. We're about to have a heat wave here. Being aware of your body. How much of your body are you feeling? It will grow as you practice this. Then you'll bring your, your enlightenment into the physicality. Enlightenment goes down, actually. You can have the mind thing. So what? What about here? This love thing. What about here? Solar plexus. This is where the joy kicks in. <laughs> Happiness. Sacral. It's good when it gets there. Root chakra. Yeah, baby. That's what it's about. Mother Earth is the best. So, enlightenment comes down. And as it comes down, as you practice and anchor your awakening, the lower, lower parts, the deeper in your body, it becomes. It's not a head process. It's not a thought process. Because the head will convince itself that there is no doing. There is no choosing. Oh, I don't choose it. It just is, man. Yes. Are you consciously aware of it in your body at the same time? If you are consciously aware of it in your body at the same time, then you have actually chosen, haven't you? Your attention has gone into here. Okay, is my left buttock feeling God right now? Is it? If your whole body isn't glowing with everything, 
then it's not grounded, is it? But that embodiment process happens over time. As you undo your mind. Whoa! And this is how you catch a fish while you're doing a video. Or has he got off? He might have got off. Best way to catch a fish <laughs> is to do a video. There you go, the fish jumped at the same time. Yeah, no. So I didn't lose my presence when that happened, but I certainly leapt to the rod, didn't I? Because I, you know, I'd like to have some lunch. So, is it embodied? My habit is when everything happens, it's just like, I didn't lose it. <laughs> As the excitement sort of popped out of, oh, I might get a fish. Kookaburras, love them. So if you are not consciously choosing, and you're saying there's no chooser, then what you are doing is you are being unconscious, you are being lazy. If you want to pretend that what I'm not saying is true, are you being self-honest? You need to be really quite brutal with yourself. This is why my presence, my awakening has deepened so much. 11th anniversary. Seven days time, it's Christmas day at the moment. Merry Christmas. Eleven years this has deepened, become more solid. It's never, ever, ever, ever lost. 2018 gave me some pretty hard tests. We're talking four months of acute pain for starters. Three of that was because I was hit by a car. That's a big test. Being hit by a car, did I lose my presence? My God, it was my lifeline. Got me in my body to check that my spine and my toes and no bones were broken instantly while I didn't even have my breath. I had the wind knocked out of me. I couldn't breathe in. So I was on the road after being hit by the car and thrown off. Travelled 20 metres. 65 feet. presence. Now this is where the conscious practice impacts what is deeply unconscious. Right? So I, consciously, I still consciously tune in because I know I need to be awake. If I'm awake I'm here and I'm choosing, right? My choice. But at the deeper levels because I've integrated at such a deeply unconscious level, my presence is always here. I actually can't lose it even if I'm not focused on it. And it's always there, even before I can snap my fingers. That's how fast it is. This is why it's measurable. Right? So at the deepest levels, I'm connected to all that is. I got hit by a car. Big shock. Right? But my conscious habit, my deep-rooted abidance, still and it's the presence it meant that when I was on the ground and I had the wind knocked out of me and my body was in pain I didn't know if anything was broken or not or if I still actually had a functional spine my first reaction was to enter presence I simply can't lose it it's not a particular test I want to reface quite frankly and I I wish it all upon you that none of you guys have those sorts of life experiences that make you see it. Life does what it does. So, is it an actual choosing? Yes, I'm choosing to be aware of the stillness and the nothingness. And why would I do that? Because <laughs> it's awesome. All those words, bliss, happiness, peace, love, joy, joy is sacral as well. 
just doesn't leave, even when life isn't nice. You can still have joy and anger at the same time, how's that? Well, does that do your head in? Until you've experienced it, and you've experienced it numerous, numerous, numerous times, then you have the evidence that that's real for you. Measurable. Is this a practice? Yes. Is it a doing? Yes. You, <laughs> me, where's my attention? Fish confirmed it, thank you. And when you're self-honest about it, you'll notice when it's not there. So what has happened to you in the last week where you wasn't instantly aware of your stillness at the same time? How long did it take for you to bring it back? For you people that are into the Eckhart Tolle stuff, if your pain body's activated, how easily do you get your presence back to be here? So you have that peace and you're not got your pain body eating at you and all the internal dialogue they said this i said that you do this you do that all that rubbish after the argument how long does it take for you to come back i guess it depends on how bad the argument was <laughs> And if that relationship is an important one, and if that relationship is now broken or not. But then, you know, then you'll be with the anger and the sadness and all those other things as you go through that healing process. But you can still be present with it at the same time. Are you present with it at the same time? Relationships still break up when you're enlightened. It still sucks. It still hurts. But the peace and the stillness and the joy and all those other things can be there with it at the same time. You will know that as you experience it. You will know that as you put it in your presence diary, presence journal. This is why I advocate people do those things. The only evidence that's real is the evidence that's in your life, eh? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what Krishna said or Jesus or Muji or Eckhart or Adja. <laughs> it's only real when you've actually had that and can you have it now so it is a choosing are you still here what's happening with your soul plexus your tummy breathing can you hear the wind coming from the microphone what noises are in your environment <laughs> choice free will it is a doing it is a choosing end of story if you have an awakening experience <coughs> with no practice you can guarantee you're gonna lose it and you'll go oh I wish it was like that again if it's not instantly here like that it's not real and if you're trying to tell yourself and me and everybody else that it is real when it's not then you're lying to yourself hey self-honesty so i've talked about a few different processes here it is a habit you have to consciously choose otherwise you're asleep you need to consciously to be consciously awakened you need to be consciously aware as the awakening it's in the language. There is the other secondary cycle of it becoming a deeply rooted habit. Until at the deepest levels you are connected to God and it never leaves you. That is the abiding phase. Always there. I don't have to be aware of it. I don't have to be choosing it. Although I do choose it. I am aware of it. But that's once you've hit the enlightened phase. Which I call abiding, as in you live there. 
it's not just a once-off. It happened three weeks ago and I had this awakening. Mine hasn't stopped for 11 years now. Thanks, Vish. So there's 11 years of evidence. There's 11 years of diaries, me filling it out with what went on with my day, what my reactions were, how good my presence was, what did I learn, a lot of self-honesty. And I've had my mentor, my coach, through with me through that all the time as well, also pointing out my crap. <laughs> Can't escape anything from her. This is why coaching's a great idea. So you're still aware of that space that you are? Are you aware of your tummy? Your hands? It's a habit. Relentless habit. Sorry, but it's a lot of work. And <laughs> you've got to be keen. You've got to be motivated to have this. And if you are motivated and you do the practice, it is fast. Two to four years to the mid non-abiding phase therefore your pain body's wiped out yes you'll still have emotions but they're related to this instance now here today not what happened when you were three years old so yes you still have feelings and emotions and these things are indicators to do something change something it's also a sign hey be present <laughs> two fish jump nature talks to us all the time that's why it's good to get out into it how much do you choose the habit what have you put in your life to help you enforce that habit of being present do you listen to these videos when you're driving are you activating your presence or you listen to Eckhart Tolle while driving or whatever. Whoever floats your boat. You'll notice I'm quite direct and I pull you back over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Because that's what's required for you to consciously choose. Even when you're enlightened, it's always here. But if you're here, always here, then you would want to be aware of it, wouldn't you? Attention. You can't feel God if you're not actually got your attention on God. So I can hold God while I do everything else. Because it's deepened to such a degree I can do that. It's still a choice. Free will of my attention placement. It's the one thing nobody can ever take from you. You can be put in solitary confinement in a jail for 20 years. What are you going to do? Where are you going to choose to put your attention? This is why most people go insane and it's one of the worst things that can ever happen to a human. Oh, I'd love it. I've had nine days of basically no people, so I'm loving it. don't want to see people. But, you know, all of this talks to me. I am this. That it wouldn't bother me if I was put in solitary confinement for five years or ten or twenty. Would you? What would happen? I'm so comfortable with the stillness that I am. The stillness of spirit. That's why it's an acclimatization. As you practice entering presence in the stillness, you'll go through those fear things. <clears throat> but then you get used to it and you see it's actually not a problem. Your ego realizes, hey, the stillness stuff has some real benefits. When I'm feeling crap, I've got somewhere safe to go. <laughs> Isn't that just ego? Well, yes, but you can't perceive all of this without an ego. <laughs> Please, someone try and explain to me how that would happen otherwise. So the ego literally allows all of that and becomes twined with it. Then there's a second process. 
and I'm going to start talking about this more. And the silence and the stillness, the stillness that I am, you are spirit God, you know, it's all very universal. And people that have the mental awakenings, third eye crown, or just mind stuff that's not even real, because it's created in the head. It's not grounded, is it? So when you properly awaken, it starts coming in your body, and it's embodied through your emotions, through everything. Now, what happens is, as you purify that, you purify your ego and all these other things, you become quiet. Stillness, quietness. Quietness is the, the, the embodiment of the stillness, but it's personalized, it's through your ego, it's through your mind, it's through your emotional and mental emotional systems. And it's quite connected, very connected to the body. Very, very connected to the body. So it does have a solidness to it. Solid nothingness, solid grounded sensations. The body becomes a lot more pleasurable because you're in it. And it's connected to God at the same time. So are you aware of both hands, this one here and this one here, and the two feet, that one over there and that one over there, tummy, back of your neck? Can you hold all these areas in your consciousness at the same time and be grounded? Okay. You got it? I prompt you in these videos so you do it and you see the habit I'm talking about. Consciously choosing. Notice you're choosing. It's your doing. Or are you, there is no choosing, I'm just awake man. Oh, it's time to roll over. Self-honesty. Are you being self-honest about this? Doesn't matter what I say or what everybody else has said. This is true for you. Therefore, is what I'm saying, have you practiced as we've done this? Has the evidence, what's the evidence? Can you literally stub your toe and be aware of God at the same time while the pain rips through your body and you go, I've had eight black toenails in the last year and a half because I've had bedrooms that are too small and I keep banging my little toes. They hurt. My first reaction is, while I feel the pain, there's a video on pain, go and watch that, how to be with pain. It's measurable. So as you practice these things, it becomes more embodied. Your being becomes more quiet. You notice the nuances more. Various things. So there's always more, more, more. There's more refinement. There's more purifying. There's more growing of the quietness of your being, your ego, your personality, your mind. The mind gets quieter. But it's not a problem if it's noisy either. Because you connect to this instantly. Feeling your body, hearing Kookaburra if he's coming through. So yes, it's a habit, yes, it's a doing, yes, it's a choosing, it's your attention, where is it? End of story. If this is wrong, please explain it to me clearly. <laughs> How's that for the biggest finish, eh? Hey? No, that was a good size tailor. <laughs> Notice what's going on in your environment. Notice if you're that space at the same time. If you want to make this real, and you want to cut down the amount of time it takes, make contact. Let's do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentoring. Be the best thing you'll ever do. Jason for awakenedessence.com